Hi there guys. You know it's going to be bad if there's a warning before the video, but before I proceed I'd like to say there's going to be a few fans of a well-known guitar company slating and gritting their teeth for this video. Please note though that I also own one of these higher-end guitars made by a well-known company. So, I don't know. It was a difficult review, it was a confusing review for me to do. Uh, all the inner conflict that I had from, you know, loving the brand and loving the guitar itself and then going and trying a Nomad brand, something totally new out of the blue. Also note that uh, my opinions are subjective, they are my opinions, my views, but let me know how you feel in the comment section below. Also if you're on a mallard, let me know what you think of it and tell me if I'm right or wrong. If you don't believe me, get a mallard. Take care, enjoy the review. Keep listening to the Utopian Nights. Enjoy. Hello there guys, I'm Alex Morley from the Utopian Nights and I'm here today with another Mallard review. And the reason why I'm doing this specific guitar today is because it was featured in Last Rays of Light. It played the rhythm and the first solo. Unfortunately, I can't take credit for the second solo because Tanuka did it and he kicked my ass once again. Um, so, this is called the Mallard Utopia, which I think is very nice uh, of Rob to call it that. We're actually going to have our logo on the back of the headstock and then have it lacquered over. So, if you get your hands on this guitar, by then it'll probably have the little Utopian Knight symbol on the back. Pretty cool. Um, I'm hoping to get a custom build from Rob as well, but you know, I'll save that for another time. So what is it? It is a Stratelli hybrid, and I'm going to tell you a story about it first. So basically, when I walk into Rob's house, I browse at his beautiful guitars that he's got lined up there for me. This one didn't really catch my eye, but when he handed it over to me, I took it home, plugged it in, uh, into the Fender Champion and it was a ridiculous sound ridiculously good that is it was so good to the point that I actually started to question and I shouldn't be doing this because I, I always said from the beginning that I wouldn't be comparing these to any of the USA built or any other brands but let's just say it was better than a USA made Strat. Well, you're kind of going to guess the company there because they're the only company that do USA made Stratocasters, but basically, that's why I wanted to use it. It's a bespoke sound, and that's probably got something to do with the fact that it's got coil tapping capabilities, and this is a stacked humbucker. I don't know, I don't know. It, it doesn't sound like a Strat, and it definitely doesn't sound like a Tally. That'll be for your ears to decide. Um, so let's go through the specs now. What we've got is a one-piece Alder body here. Uh, we've got the three-ply plastic pick guard with the binding around it once again. We've got the Ashtray Bridge by Wilkinson's. Uh, it's Wilkinson, sorry. Uh, you've got the 500k CTS parts for the tone and volume. All of the components are wired up with the wax-coated wiring. Uh, you've got orange drop tone capacitors in there. Uh, I'm sorry, but I won't be posting pictures of the internals this time because I've been told that if I do, I'm going to struggle to get all the cables back in because it's that complex. Um, it's unfortunate, but you saw what the Cabernita was like inside. I can inform you, though, that inside of here, it's all uh, kind of coated in, uh, in copper foil. So, you know, I wish I could show you. But it would mean taking off the pit guard and also mean, you know, fanning about with the, with all the cables as well. Anyway, so you've got the coil tap, you've got your four-way switch. All right, you've got so as I said, this is an Alder body, and for the neck, you've got the uh, maple neck, one-piece maple neck. Um, you've got your locking tuners, again, the mallard. Handcrafted in Yorkshire, and my life handcrafted in Yorkshire, on the neck plate. 
you've got the uh, jumbo frets on it again. It's got a 25 inch scale length. Uh, what else is there to cover really? Um, we'll go on to the, the humbuckers because these are very bespoke and kind of what makes the guitar as amazing as it is. So, please excuse me for how I pronounce this. Uh, muddled it up once before. Um, you've got the, the bridge. It's a stacked humbucker. Uh, then the middle and neck are iron gear pig irons. So, there you go. You've kind of got a, a little combo of different uh, single coil single coil pickups and then you've got your hornbuckers as well it's interesting uh, and you can get some amazing tone from the four way switch and then fiddling around with your coil tap as well so let's get on to the last rays of light we'll see what you guys think I hope you enjoy both versions, the instrumental that you'll hear in this video and our uh, video with the lyrics as well so you know there'll be a little groovy music video to that featuring this guitar too you've just got to I'm amazed by it, to be honest, and this is still part of the mid-range series, so, as I always say, I can't wait to see what's to come in the future. Ah, and before I miss it, as well, you've got a standard uh, graphite nut this time, not the nylon nut, which is interesting. Uh, I seem to think this guitar maintains sustain better than the Cabernita, and it suits me down to a T. I hope you enjoy it, guys.